Because let's not forget, Mormons love the Bible too, or at least they say they do. They actually have what's called a quad. It's the, uh, the Bible, the Book of Mormon, Doctrine of Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price. There are four books that are writings and other things from Joseph Smith. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Conscious Thoughts. My name is Richard, and uh, we're going to be talking about the Chosen Season 3 trailer. Show's not up just yet, although when you're watching this, it might be. We're going to talk about it and what it means and what we should be doing about it. Welcome to the show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. Briefly about me, uh, I'm a husband and a father. I'm a pastor of a church here in Kentucky, originally from California. Uh, I did go to seminary and uh, to Southern Baptist Church. Don't worry, we're not woke. That's our new headline right on the bottom of the sign outside. No, I'm just kidding. But really, we're not woke. Uh, and this is my channel. Welcome to the channel. Uh, if you're new, please consider subscribing. Uh, join the community. I'd really appreciate it. I'm really quite good, actually. I must say, I've got a lot of very faithful commenters and um, people in the live chat. I'll do live Q&As as well as live debates and other things. Uh, well, I did just one debate. I shouldn't say that. Uh, live conversations is really what I'm about to say. Uh, I just had a live debate with uh, two guys. One used to be Roman Catholic, now he's Protestant. And one used to be Protestant, now he's Roman Catholic. So it was very good. Uh, it's over three hours long. But there's chapters in it, so look out for that. But today we're talking about the chosen. And we're going to look at these things because these things matter. The chosen Jesus. Everybody has a Jesus, all right? Everybody. Muslims, Buddhists, atheists, Mormons, Christians. Everybody has a Jesus. And the question is, what type of Jesus do you have? Do you have the right Jesus? Even if you don't believe in Jesus, you still believe something about Jesus, Romans 1 20, God has placed knowledge of himself and everybody. He's shown it to them, the scripture says. So the good about the chosen, uh, just regarding this, I have watched the show. Uh, it's a TV show, episodic thing. Maybe you've heard of it. Probably you've heard of it. I'd be surprised if you haven't, to be honest. Uh, but it's become one of the most popular shows on the internet. Literally millions and millions of people have watched it. Uh, people have streamed it thousands and thousands of times. Over and over again, sharing it, buying the merch, all sorts of different things. I have to be upfront. 2019, spring of 19, of course, you know, before crazy lockdowns, I was stoked. I remember seeing the trailers and the production quality, the acting was just second to none. It was fully crowdfunded the first season. I don't know if the other ones still are. I think they are. Pretty sure they are. But I know the first season certainly was. And it wasn't cheap. I mean, they were raising hundreds of thousands of dollars because cameras and equipment and of course locations and you gotta pay people. It's a job. It's still a job. And whether they're acting, whether they're an assistant director or editor or lighting, whatever. It's made a massive splash. Massive splash. Tidal wave really on the online entertainment world. And I mean it's it's second to none. It really is. So it's safe to say that the prediction from a few years ago, thinking that this is going to be huge, has, has come true. I watched all eight episodes with my family. We watched as a family of six, all four of our children. We enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, everything was great. Popcorn, sparkling waters, blankets, couch, family night, hanging out, watching the shows. Very good. The optics are good. They're top notch. 10 out of 10 compared to the leading Christian works. Really is. There's other good things, but. We're going to move on for now. The bad, I would say. Something to note, though, is we did watch the second season. And my objections to it, because I've done a few other videos, which I'll link in the description, and they'll be at the end of this video, isn't that it's breaking the second commandment. That's not my reason to watch the show. I know some people have that, but I'd be curious what their thoughts are on children's coloring pages or the thousands of pieces of Renaissance art, for example, that depict Jesus. I know there's others that say, well, you know, the, the writers, they're adding to scripture, quote unquote. They're adding to scripture. And this should be, you know, we shouldn't do this, right? Sufficiency, et cetera. Okay. We should only do what's explicitly found in the Bible, which I agree. I completely agree with. Uh, as far as everything pertaining to life and godliness, what the scripture says, this is our faith. 
kind of an entertainment regulative principle. If you know the regulative principle, it's what we should only do and regulate in our service what we see in the Bible. Well, I'm curious what people think of plastic communion cups, church buildings, or pulpits, because none of those things are in the Bible either. And my favorite, cats. Cats aren't in the Bible. We don't have cats. We don't have, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't say you have to wear a tie or a suit or shorts or ripped jeans or $800 sneakers. So it, it's very sticky, very quick, the regular principle. But there seems to be a entertainment regular principle where you can't do these certain things. Now, I would argue that they shouldn't do these certain things because if they're adding in a negative sense, making Jesus just another man and Jesus was just a good moral teacher, well, obviously you're adding the scripture because he's not just a good moral teacher. Moral teachers don't lie about who they are. These are both valid concerns, and if you have one of these concerns, I'm not trying to disparage you, neither of those are my concern here. So, what is my concern? Well, upon taking a fantastic, upon uh, taking in the fantastic acting and the amazing images, we also see mediocre writing. And I'm not an expert, although I did study uh, film production and did work in film for a while. Southern California, I pursued that for several years and wrote some scripts and I'm no, you know, Spielberg or whoever else, right? But he's not a writer anyways, director and producer, but it's hard to write scripts. But there's certain kind of just things that you just you just know. I'd say five out of ten with the writing. It's it's not it's not great. It really isn't. Too many times did they have things, especially in the first season, like good luck or coarse interactions that just didn't really make sense. Too much focus is given to Mary Magdalene when it borders on saying, <clears throat> without saying, that she was an apostle too. Of course, the creators of the show would likely not assent to this and say, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. But nevertheless, it's very apparent. Let's keep in mind the goal of the show is to binge Jesus and get used to different and get Jesus in front of as many people as possible. Amen, amen. I mean, it's literally millions of people, millions of people, crowdfunded. Uh, one of the producers is Daryl Eves. He's a uh, YouTube guy, guru, who helps generate stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's worked. On YouTube, it's been great. Seeing it, pushing it, it's wonderful in that aspect. So the common person is seeing this. Maybe somebody who grew up in church, somebody who's, you know, Hindu, atheist, whatever. And they're, you know, younger people because it's entertainment. Let's be real here. The phones and the Internet, this is the public square these days. So this is where things are happening. But it's easy then, if someone doesn't know scripture, could likely be duped. Could and likely. Probably was duped into thinking Mary is an apostle. Let's not forget, of course, things like the Da Vinci Code that's just complete fiction. And, you know, Mary Mary and Jesus got married and they left and went to India. There's all sorts of superstition about it. But we watched the first season. We watched the second season. But there was a few times that I had to explain certain things. Now, I was overall willing to overlook other things, and we do this with all entertainment we consume, right? I, I highly doubt every single thing you watch is 100% biblically approved. Maybe we shouldn't do this, and this is a good question for you. What do you think? Drop a comment. Tell me. Should we watch anything? Have you found a benefit one way or the other? Have you found a benefit in something of you used to do this, and now you do this, or you moderate it? Tell me in the comment. I'd, I'd really like you to share. It's always helpful and uh, good for discussion. I believe the best way to handle anything, really, is to view and read and hear and understand it with discretion, with our Christian worldview. We must have a biblical worldview and hiding and hiding from something really is not going to do it. Now, sure, there are certain situations where we should hide from you know, pornography, right? You shouldn't consume pornography and say, well, it's just, it's just Christianized. You know, how, how can I understand this pornography from a biblical worldview? No, you flee that youthful lust. You flee the immorality. You run from that sin. So season two came out. Season one, you know, it was good. You know, grand, okay. Season two, though, there was less in the good luck language, at least it seemed to me, in the role of the women. Luke 24, 10. This was filled out by Mary, Jesus' mother, and a totally fictional character named Rama. Now we have Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Rama. The sets were grander and the apostles were being chosen. More was happening. And if you want to get a full summary, you can get a full summary somewhere else. I'm not going to do that here. 
But suffice to say, season two, I think, is better overall than season one. However, there's still a few things that are percolating. Still a few things that are kind of bubbling up to the surface. I did a few critique videos, which, like I mentioned, they'll be at the end of this video. But most of them are off-screen decisions regarding the relationship between Christians and Mormons, Mormons and Christians. And I, I can honestly say it's been one of the top three most fascinating and beautiful things about this project has been my growing brother and sisterhood with people of the LDS community that I never would have known otherwise and learning so much about um, about your, your faith tradition um, and realizing, gosh, for all the stuff that maybe we don't see eye to eye on, that all happened, that's all based on stuff that happened after Jesus was here. Um, the stories of Jesus, we do agree on. And his gist is basically, we agree on Jesus, and all these things happened afterward. Namely, you know, Joseph Smith, the early 19th century, and the golden plates, and the angel Moroni, and God the Father, God the Son are showing up. And we disagree with those things, Dallas Jenkins says. And okay, good. But then there's other things he says that we still worship the same Jesus. But Mormons, according to Mormon theology, or Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints theology, <clears throat> they don't like to be called Mormon anyway. It's a different Jesus. Dallas, it's a different Jesus. I understand you have friends who are LDS. I get it. But it's not the same Jesus. I'm sorry. It's not. We have to think and we think, well, Jesus was a man. And I think some people think that. Right? There's a lot of people who don't like it. A lot of stiff collared evangelicals were very proper, right? Well, Jesus was God. Jesus was God. Yes, well, he was also a man. Well, yeah, but he was, he was God. The Chosen seems to kind of diminish that in some people's minds. I think that's another objection that a lot of people have, third objection if you want to call it that. They don't like Jesus in this perspective. Now they have the accents, although everybody's still they're a little more tannish than, you know, straight Scandinavian or, you know, Northern European, which is nice. They look like they could be in the Judean, you know, Mediterranean area. More sun, no closer to the equator. And they have the accents, which is good. They're not British accents either or American. So we can see Jesus and know that he was a man, right? Yes, he was a man. We also love him as Savior and Lord, and so we kind of diminish that fact. We don't really want to focus on Jesus being a man too much. Oh, okay, he was a man. He was God, he was God. It was, of course, the polar opposite of the progressive so-called Christians who focus nearly all their attention on Jesus and how much of a man he was and blow past his divinity. Both are errors, though. And this is kind of just an aside. These are 1,800-year-old plus Gnostic, fake, her heretical errors. They're bad. We won't go into those too much, but if you want, look up adoptionism for the latter and Sabellianism for the former. Jesus was both God and man. Not just God in a body, but the divine son, the second person of triune Godhead, took on flesh, adding humanity. John 1.14. The ugly. So then, the ugly. Comes the season three trailer, which dropped mid-October. I know, I'm about a week and a half late, I know, I know. And in watching some of these scenes, you hear Jesus, or Jonathan Rumi, Romy, I think it is, the actor playing Christ. And again, he's a very good actor. Production is insane. It's so, so good. Looks great, the, the angles, they know what they're doing. Dallas Jenkins, very talented. Like, two thumbs way, way up. Two thumbs up. And by my account... Watching the trailer, it's a couple minutes. There's at least six direct quotes and references to the scripture. Great. Praise God. I think this is probably the most. I'm going to go on a limb and say this is the most compared to season one and two as far as actual words from Christ and the gospels being portrayed directly in the trailer. Now, I hope that's in the show. However, there's also a scene where Jesus is talking to a Pharisee, Sadducee. I can't tell. I'm not a scholar in that regard and one guy's talking he says a scourge of false prophecy must stop and then the scene cuts and moves to another leader and jesus is standing there and he says jesus if you do not renounce your words we will have no choice but to follow the law of moses all great so far were these things said in 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 the scripture in one way or another yes were they said in real life certainly jesus replies i am the law of moses You've probably seen this. You've probably seen some of these videos. And some people say, ah, proof, proof, proof. This is definitely proof that the Mormons are running the chosen. Because let's not forget, Mormons love the Bible too. Or at least they say they do. Okay? 
they actually have what's called a quad. It's the, uh, the Bible, the Book of Mormon, Doctrine of Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price. There are four books that are writings and other things from Joseph Smith. And they're supposedly lost tablets that were ushered in. And just as a summary, by the way, the belief is, and we'll look at Nephi here, the Book of Mormon, I know, I know, that Nephi, there's third Nephi, there's two other books, there's three total, that Jesus left, he ascended, the end of Matthew, we see the beginning of Acts. He didn't go to the Father first, he came over to the Americas. And he came over to the Americas, and that Jesus came over, and there was civilization. There's mass civilization, and, 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 and all sorts of different exotic animals, and warriors, and Indian you know, natives, and different tribes, because they came over as the lost tribes of Israel. They traveled over from Israel across the Atlantic, landed, this is, you know, before Christ, so thousands of years ago. Now, did people come here? Yes, but that was the Bering Strait and something different. Again, that's a different video. I don't want to rabbit trail. So the belief is that there's people here in America. Christ leaves the Mediterranean, you know, region, Jerusalem, Judea, technically, and he goes to America, and he reveals more truth to them. And this is what was written down on the Golden Tablets. This is what's then given to Joseph Smith in the early 19th century. He writes it down. He puts his head in a hat. He he, he translates this into from a language that doesn't exist. I, I believe Reformed Egyptian doesn't exist. It's a whole big thing. So we can see that. I am the law of Moses. Some people say, well, it comes from the Book of Mormon. So that's the backstory of Book of Mormon. It comes from the Book of Mormon. Okay. Well, does it? Because it kind of sounds like, you know, I mean, I am. I mean, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the law of Moses. That's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Wretched Radio, they dropped something on this as well. Several people have. Now, John over at What Do You Mean, which we'll look at his video here in a moment, he did a couple things. And he does, he's not so sure. And that's good. We're going to be, I want to be kind. I really want to be discerning. And I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going to do at the end or what my thoughts are on the show overall, whether I'm going to watch it or not. So it might sound off, right? Like I am the law of Moses. You're kind of, okay. Like I know Jesus is the great shepherd and the way and okay. Living water. He does say before Abraham was, I am John 8:58. Jesus citing, of course, Exodus 3.14, where Moses is the burning bush, and God tells Moses, I am who I am. Tell them I am sent me. And if Moses asks, who should I say? Right. And we'll look at the next part of that verse and what happens with the Pharisees who are there. And Jesus says, I am. But he never said that he was the law of Moses. Now, to be fair, he doesn't say that he's the law of Moses in the Book of Mormon either. Third Nephi, verse 8. For behold, the covenant which I made with my people is not all fulfilled, but the law which was given unto Moses hath an end in me. Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me and endure to the end, and ye shall live. For unto him that endureth to the end I will give eternal life. End quote. So that there from the official Book of Mormon website, all that. We have to stop for a moment. Stop. Three. Right? And it is biblical. I'm not trying to say that it's not. Uh, in the sense that it's being taken from the Bible. <laughs> right? And I'm not saying the Book of Mormon is biblical. Don't hear me say that. Because that's not what I said. What the phrase is and how he's saying, endure to the end and you'll be saved, etc., etc. But remember, Dallas says that Mormons are his brothers and sisters in Christ. Watched a clip earlier, and so he kind of like plays it off as if Mormonism is just another sect, a third or fourth group of people. And yeah, like Roman Catholicism, Protestantism, Pentecostalism, and then Mormonism. But he said that they worship the same Jesus. I mentioned this earlier. Many of the producers are Mormon. I've already said that as well. Angel Studios, though, is also owned by Mormons, supposedly. I don't haven't confirmed that back, but that's what I've been told. The sets they use in Utah, very nice, you know, first century sets, very professional, very good looking. Those are in Utah, and of course, Utah is the head of the Roman, Roman Catholic Church, the Mormon Church, or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
and they record and have filmed stuff there for their own projects, their own videos and other things, because they produce entertainment stuff too. So it's, it's, it's difficult. It's not like we're saying, listen, you're highly influenced by the Quran. And he's like, I don't even know any Muslim, right? That'd be very different way off base, but it's saying, and we'll read a quote, quote from here for a moment, uh, that he commented or the chosen commented. And it's like, yeah, but you are though, you are highly influenced. I'm not saying you are LDS. And, and honestly, Dallas seems like a really guy, nice guy, but I have to step back and we have to just get some thick skin for a moment and realize we're talking about a contact, con concept. We're talking about stuff, ideas, not the person. We're not attacking Dallas Jenkins, the person, the husband. I think he's got kids, the father, the producer, the creative. He's very creative, very, he's just a visionary. I love it. It's great. Really, really is. But, but, there is high influence from the LDS church. There's, there's no doubt about that. We have to remember, think about Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Do not think that I came to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish it, but fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. But he doesn't say I'm the law of Moses, right? Maybe just a coincidence. Like I said, another channel is reviewing it. This is John from What Do You Mean? He did a couple videos recently. And he has a clip of another different guy, which we'll watch in a moment. So there's two options. One is we're just going to take, take them at their word. This isn't connected. This isn't from the law or the book of Moses, rather. And the other one is. And, we're, and it is being deceptive. Believe them or call them liars. I want to be kind. I'm going to believe Dallas. However, however, we have to look a little bit more. And we'll wrap up here in a moment. So let's switch over to. On another creator's channel, it appears that they have clarified that the quote is not from the Book of Mormon. I recently received a comment on my YouTube channel from The Chosen where they say, thanks for the thoughtful approach. To be clear, Dallas has no association with the LDS Church, just some people who are LDS. And of course, the Moses Law quote isn't from the Book of Mormon, but folks love to look for controversy. So there you have it. So now we have confirmation that the quote wasn't, in fact, inspired by the Book of Mormon. And personally, all this makes me think deeper about how we as Christians can so easily underestimate our sin nature. I realize. Okay, so yeah, John, super humble, nice guy. He's got a great channel there. If you haven't, if you don't know what do you mean, check it out. But <laughs> it's okay, fine. So say it's not from the Book of Mormon. But the trouble is, the trouble is, why did we not use other phrases, right? The Gospel of John, probably the most popular gospel with at least evangelicals, Americans, today. I want him to be more careful. This is, again, Dallas, be more careful, brother. Please. Because, yeah, you kind of cleaned up the good luck, kind of certain weird stuff, kind of goofy, not great lingo. You know, you get a four out of, four out of five, four out of ten, five out of ten. Not great on the dialogue. Just not. And dialogue is a huge part of a show, right? But be more careful because even if this is not, and you're just like, yeah, I'm the law of Moses. And it's like, oh, oh, that's kind of coincidental on the Book of Mormon. Well, we didn't pull it from the Book of Mormon. No big deal. Okay, I'm going to believe you. I'm going to believe you. But there are eight other I am statements that you could have used. I am the bread of life, John 6, 35, 41, 48, and 51. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. I am the door to the sheep, John 10, 7. I'm the resurrection and the life. That's kind of controversial. John eleven twenty five. 25. I am the good shepherd, John 10, 11, and 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. Great evangelism, right? Very good one to remember. I am the true vine, John 15, 1, and 5. And of course, what I already mentioned, John 8, 58. Why not use any of these, guys? Dallas Jenkins. Probably won't see this because I'm tiny and nobody knows who I am. That's okay. But I'm still putting it out there. Into the universe. No, 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 no. <laughs> Why not use one of these? 
Why not? I mean, let's just, I don't know, read John 8, 59. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, some people take this statement and run with it. Oh, Jesus, uh, he's self-reflecting, and that doesn't mean he's God. Well, why in the world would they pick up stones, it says, to throw at him? But Jesus himself hid himself and went out of the temple, unquote. They're just going to kill people because you have this self-realization, like some skeptics and unbelievers say today? No. He's quoting Exodus 3. He's saying, I'm God. Now, he's not saying it so boldly and plainly and boring like we would want him to say today in the 21st century. But it nevertheless is true. Dallas, just be careful, man. Viewer, be careful. You, listening, watching, be careful. Because, uh, okay, if you've, if, and again, if you've not convinced and you're like, yeah, but he didn't say it. Yeah, okay, he's not part of the LDS church. Well, he's not part of it, but he's highly influenced by it. Dallas, the show. Daryl Eaves. Daryl Eaves is a great guy. He's really nice. I watched his YouTube content uh, on growing a channel, and I took a lot of his, his advice. If you're not convinced, that's fine. That's okay. You want to keep watching the show? Great. You want to hate the show and say they're all heretics? Okay. I, personally, I watched the first two seasons. I don't have any plans to watch anymore. That might change, uh, but sadly, because it's a good show. As far as the looks, right? You can't disagree with the optics. It looks fabulous. The acting is amazing. It really is. But I'm certainly not going to watch it with my family. Because, again, and this kind of just goes up to hold a whole other video about entertainment, but we, we have to be more discerning. And it's easy to see the good and the bad. But we see this constant blurring. And now Chosen's not doing this, but we see... You know, the new Lord of the Rings series, which I've not watched, won't watch. I've heard it's just terrible, according to, you know, Tolkien and others, uh, you know, how he would have wanted it. But there's this, this blurring. Everything's just gray. There isn't really right. There isn't really wrong. We see this with the Marvel characters, a lot of the superheroes these days. So many things now. It's just people are, they're just kind of, well, you know, we're not really sure. We see this with Star Wars a lot. I'm still kind of tracking with a lot of the Star Wars stuff. Point is. You have your convictions, and these are not even secondary issues. These are barely tertiary issues as far as the entertainment we consume. My conviction is not to watch The Chosen. Might be different. Tell me your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Uh, always good for discussion. And again, if you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to build a community here, and it's been great. Um, I do have a separate page for uh, my Contra Talk, which are conversations. Check that out as well. They'll be in the description. And feel free, you can find my church website as well, uh, where you can watch sermons and other things. It's not my church website, of course, it's Christ Church, uh, but the church I pastor, New Harvest Baptist Church here in Kentucky. So, again, hope this finds you well. Until we meet again, be against the world for the world.